Well, here we go with theorem 1210, volume of a cone. And um, we're going to first construct this cone so we can see that it's a solid of revolution. We're going to revolve this triangle and following the path of this circle. And you can see where that's going. I mean, we've got a radius of two meters of this circle, and, which would be the base, end up being the base, and a height of three. So if I do this, and um, oh, a little tricky, and then right there, Aha! Uh -huh. I've got myself a cone. And right away I could just directly substitute two equations on the left. Of course the area of the base is pi r squared. So pi r squared times height. Let's look at it another way. Instead, let's try this. I'm going to take and draw over here and over here. And I'm going to color this in like that. And now I want to spin this around the circular path. I don't have much luck with this. Let me see if I can get it this time. Oh, oh, da! Well, pretty close. And we can see here that what we've got is a cylinder. And we all know a cylinder is pi r squared h, and we have, you can see inside there, you can see the cone. And the cone, the relationship, because they have the same height, that cone is exactly one-third of that cylinder. Isn't that amazing? That's the way I want you to think of it. All right, let's do one quick and easy one. Number four, exercise number four, just plug and chug. We've got the equation. 1 third pi r squared h, direct substitution. We've got 10 for a radius, 13 for a height. 10 squared is 100. 100 times 13, 1300. Now I'm leaving it in this form so that we can just pull out the calculator. We know the units are cubic millimeters. Where'd that calculator go? Oh, let's start from scratch here. 1,300. And I could go either way here. I could times pi or divide by 3. I'll do the times pi first because that number means something. That's the volume of a cylinder with that same height and base. And now I'm just going to divide by 3. Same as multiplying by a third. And there I go. 1,361. Rounding to the nearest hundredths, 36. Let's move on. Well, this is a pretty straightforward way to get started with our cones, but um, something interesting on this one, I've got a right cone here on the right. Um, I can manipulate this cone, and, and we're just going to, of course, change it a bit like we did with given drawing. See, it doesn't really matter where I put this, well, as long as it has the same height, it doesn't really matter where I put that vertex. This cone is going to have the same volume as the right one. So, let's do the math. All right, a substitution, put in two for the height, one for the radius, pretty straightforward. Looks like two thirds pi. Well, two thirds pi, which is two divided by three and keep all those digits in your calculator, times the pi key, and you should come up with about two and nine hundredths and that would be cubic meters. Well, we've had a forward problem. Let's go in reverse. We're starting with the volume, and we're going to calculate a missing component, and that would be the radius. And we'll do a substitution here. We're going to put in 216 pi. This is easy to put in a toss of softball here. And we're replacing r with x. I wish we just solved for r, but they put an x in there. So let's just go from here. We can simplify the right-hand side of the equation because, of course, a third of 18 is 6, so we're paring this thing down. Now let's, let's talk through units, even though we're not writing them. We'll talk through them when, at this step. I divide both sides of the equation by pi. So I still have cubic units on the left, but on this here, when I divide both sides by 6, I'm dividing by inches. I now have 36 square inches. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. The square root of square inches is inches. 
We'll take the positive or principal root, x, or radius, 6 inches. Let's find the volume of this cone using this equation. And we're going to start with this given figure right here. This is the cross-sectional area, where this is going to represent the height. And this will represent the radius. And we've discussed this before, and you can visualize this. So, well, it's not quite the 3D software, but you get the idea. That's what we mean by a solid of revolution. And we know that, so this triangle represents a cross-sectional area. There's a ratio here because this is a 30-60-90 triangle. The sides are in the ratio of 1, 2, radical 3. Now, we know the height. We need the radius. Um, if I knew the radius, I would multiply by radical 3 to get the height. And conversely, I'm going to divide by radical 3, knowing the height, to find the radius. Oof. Well, let me just show you. I'm going from the height to the radius. That's 22 divided by radical 3. Now, before you get all excited about um, rationalizing the denominator, let's just do this. Let's just substitute into that equation. I've got 1 third times pi, r squared, and the height. Well, the r squared, let's see what happens here. We're, we're going to um, we're going to square the 22, but we're also going to square the radical 3. So I've got the whole number 3. So right now I've got a mess. I actually have 22 cubed in the numerator. I've got 9 in the denominator. And then I multiply the whole shebang by pi. Ugh. So let's um, work that all out. That's, that's just taking care of all the numbers here, the, the 22 cubed divided by 9. And then we're going to multiply, just take that number, and we will multiply by pi, round it to the nearest, oh, hundredths place. And there you go. And that would be in, of course, cubic feet. Well, here we go with a trig exercise, number 16 here. And again, we have a solid of revolution. We're going to revolve this around the axis, the height axis. And of course, that will generate a cone in our rudimentary graphics here. And we see here that the diameter of this uh, of the base is 14 yards. So remember, that's the diameter. So when we go to work this out, we're going to need to know that the radius is not. The radius is actually going to be 7 yards. So let's get cracking. Um, going back to this original triangle, I've got a 32 degree angle here, and the opposite side over the adjacent side would be the tangent function. And again, you can see over there, we, are, we know the opposite side is the radius, that's 7 yards, and the adjacent is our unknown. So, let's write it that way. And again, tangent of 32, this angle, is 7 over h, my unknown. So now we can rearrange that. And you remember, you remember by now that we can switch means and extremes, so we know we can switch these two around and rewrite that equation in a far more favorable way. We're going to write it like that. Now we have an expression for the value of h, and we have an equation, and we know the radius. There's nothing left to do than just, I'll well, just work it out. So let's do the substitution. The radius was given as 7, but we took half the 14. And now we've solved for 7 over the tangent of 32. We can simplify this a little bit. We've got three 7s in the numerator. So let's cube the 7 and um, let's see what we've got here. 343 times pi in the numerator divided by um, 3 times tangent of 32. At this point, we could pull out the calculator if you'd like to see it. And let's give it a shot there. 343 times pi. So that's 343 pi. I'm going to divide by 3. Then I'm going to divide by the tangent of 32. 32 tangent. That executes the tangent command. Now the equals does the division. And it looks like, what have I got here? 574 and 82 hundredths. Hmm. 
Let's check that out. And there we have it. Well, here we go again with another trig exercise. I see it coming. I've got a 54 degree angle here. I've got an unknown height, an unknown radius, but a given slant height. Um, and remember, we know that this is a revolved solid like that. But we're going to hide that for now because we, we're, we can just work this out. We're just going to set this one up because we've already done a trig exercise. So let's first look at the various components here. I know that with respect to the 54 degree angle, the radius is adjacent and this hypotenuse, which is the slant height, is the hypotenuse. And we'll do the substitutions there. So the cosine of 54 is r over 15. And it looks like we'll just multiply both sides of the equation by 15. And therefore, r is 15 times cosine of 54. Easy. Now let's look on the other side. Now, if I'm looking there, the h isn't adjacent. That would be opposite. So if the h is opposite, and we're going back to the known hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse, is certainly going to be the sine. So that's the sine function. Sine of 54 is h over 15. And there you go. Same thing. Multiplying by 15, h is equal to 15 times the sine of 54. Now I'm going to take this equation and I'm just going to substitute it. And that's as far as we're going to take this one. Let's perform the substitution. So in the purple, I've got the um, 15 cosine 54. And remember, you're going to square that entire expression. And then you're multiplying it by this height, 15 sine 54. And of course, you're multiplying everything by pi and taking one third. And your units of measure would be cubic centimeters. All right, I'll let you work this one out. Check it in class. Well, here we are with another composite solid. We have a cube and we have subtracted or taken away from it this cone. This cone has the same height as the cube. So let's get right to it. We have a static drawing over here and we're just going to show the setup. Cube minus cone, uh, side cubed minus one third pi r squared h. The substitution, well, five and one tenth is of course the side of the cube and the radius, remember that's not the radius of the polygon, it's the radius of the circle, which is the apothem of the polygon, and that's going to be half the five and one tenth, or two and 55 hundredths. All right, and then we could work down to an intermediate number. I haven't done any rounding yet. And if you need help with a calculator, but right now I'm not gonna show you this one, we'll just crank through it here. 97, 92 hundredths and that would be cubic meters.